Welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, we're discussing the incredibly powerful curves and levels. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in this video, as a part of our 30 Days of Photoshop series, we're gonna show you how to use curves and levels in your photos. They are by far the two most powerful adjustment layers that you can use, not only to affect lights and darks, but also all of the color in your images. In this video, we're gonna show you the differences between curves and levels and the multiple ways you can use them to start making your images better today. Now, if you haven't already signed up for 30 days of Photoshop, go ahead and do so by clicking on your screen right here. You're gonna get 30 lessons specifically designed to help you go from beginner all the way to pro, as well as the sample images you need to follow along and some extra bonuses that are only available as a part of this series. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our sample image. Let's go ahead and load up our levels and curves. We're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and levels. Let's hit okay here. And we're gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer and over to curves and hit okay. So let's start with a little bit of an analysis between the two, starting with our levels. Now we basically have two main sliders with our levels. We have our input levels, which is right here on the top. We have three slider inputs and we have our output levels here on the bottom and we have two slider inputs down here. Now on the top, we have our histogram. This is basically the light and the color information of your photograph. On the left-hand side, we have our darks and on the right-hand side, we have our lights. And we can see in this photograph, there's a lot of light space. Basically our entire background is pretty light and that corresponds with all this light space that we see here. Now we also have a spike right up here in the dark areas. It's not too dark, but maybe like dark gray. And that makes sense for this area as well as our subject. Now we can go about editing this information in a couple of different ways, both with our input and our output levels. So our input levels, as we take our black point slider and drag this from the left to the right, what this does is it takes all the information that's to the left of this slider and it makes it completely black. So if I take the slider and continue to go from the left to the right, more and more of my image is gonna go completely black. Now the same works the opposite on the right hand side. My white point is gonna take all the information in my image and make it completely white. So more of my information is just getting white, white, white until as much as possible becomes completely white. Now we have our midpoint slider that will take the midpoint of our image, basically the central values and push them either darker or lighter. Okay, let's go ahead and reset that. So that's our input levels. Next we have our output levels. That's down here in the bottom. This will take your black point and actually make it a little bit brighter. So now the darkest place in my image, instead of being black, is more of a light gray. And as I go lighter and lighter and lighter, you can see it. On the right-hand side, this will take the lightest point in my image and make it darker. So the white point gets darker and darker gray and eventually just goes all the way to black. So that's basically how the input and the output levels work here in our levels dialog. Now let's go ahead and jump over to curves real quick so I can give you an explanation of how curves work because it's actually incredibly similar. So going back over to our curves, we have all of the same information that we had on our levels, but instead of two different graphs, we just have one. So let's go ahead and start with our black point. Now our black point is here on the bottom left of our curve graph. And you can see this is just our histogram as well, right? The light information on the right and the dark information on the left. So I have a point here on the bottom left. Now if I take that and make it a little bit brighter, what it's doing is it's making my darks a little bit lighter. That is the exact same thing as taking the darks and making them brighter here in my levels, okay? So again, right here, taking our darks and making them lighter. Now if I take this point from the left to the right, it's actually changing the black point of my image, making more of my image completely black which is the exact same thing as doing this with our levels. Back to our curves again, we have our white point. So if I take my white point and bring this from the right to the left, it's making more of my image completely white, which is the same thing as doing this, going from the right to the left here. And if I go back to curves and take this from the top down to the bottom, it takes the lightest point of my image and simply makes that a little bit darker, 
Same thing as if we do this on our levels. So at this point, you might be thinking, well, it looks like they do the exact same thing. And for the most part, you're right. They do do the exact same thing. So when you're using curves and levels, there's really only one key difference, and that's with our midpoint slider. So with our levels, you have one midpoint that you can choose to make your mids either lighter or darker. Now with our curves, we have the same ability. I can click here in the middle and go a little bit brighter with my midtones or a little bit darker. But things change a little bit with curves because now I actually have the ability to add multiple points to my curve. So let's go ahead and reset this and I can actually take my light levels and make them a little bit brighter and my dark levels and make them a little bit darker. This is in fact enhancing the contrast of my photograph. I can do the opposite too. I can take my light levels and make them darker and I can take my dark levels and make them lighter. And this is basically lowering the overall contrast of my photo as I turn it off. Now, you can of course add multiple points and continue to make some adjustments, but generally with more than two or three points, you tend to get things that look a little bit odd. Like as we can see here on the left, we've kind of lost some of the information of our photograph and it's not really doing us much favors. So let's go ahead and hit reset on that. And generally when I'm using curves and levels, I'll stick to one or two points here in the curves or with levels, we'll just stick right here in the middle. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, which one of these should I use? Because they look pretty similar. Well, the answer is whichever one feels more comfortable to you. With curves, you're gonna get a little bit more variation and a little bit more control. So if you desire a little bit more control, curves are the way to go. But honestly, levels can do so much. And primarily, I tend to switch back and forth between them. So there is no right or wrong answer here. Being comfortable with both is great, but if you just use curves for the rest of your life or just levels for the rest of your life, you really wouldn't be missing out. So that's a basic introduction to curves and levels, but there are a lot more features that make these tools even more robust. Here in our levels adjustment layer, we have these eyedroppers here on the side, our black point, our gray point, and our white point. So if I click here, I can actually decide what I'd like to be my black point. In other words, I can choose what I want to be the darkest area of my image. For instance, if I go ahead and click right here, it's gonna make that area completely black and it's going to adjust my image accordingly. Now, I can set my white point here as well. For instance, if I wanna say this area, I wanna be completely white, it'll adjust my entire image. And it looks like that pretty much was white, but maybe this area that's not white, I can click there and it's gonna adjust my entire image there as well. Let's go ahead and hit reset. You can also use your gray point to get proper white balance. For instance, if you were to shoot with a gray card, you'd simply click on your image right on your gray card and you would get perfect white balance. Now you have these same tools within curves as well. So we're gonna go back to our curves adjustment. Let's go ahead and just turn off levels to make sure it didn't do anything. We have our black point. Again, I can choose anywhere in my image. Everything darker than that will become black. All right, we'll hit undo there. Maybe just go back to our subject's hair. And our white point, we can click right up here. So we're adding a little bit of contrast. Now here with curves, we have a few different options. We have basically the ability to just create the points of our curve, as we see here, or we can go ahead and draw them in. If I wanna just draw a really fun looking curve, check that out. <laughs> At any point, you can kind of draw in the curve that you want, and you can create some really interesting things that you really can't do with levels. Not to say that it's something that's going to help your image, but hey, if this is the sort of style that you wanna do, well, have a lot of fun, just kind of like drawing in areas with your curves. It is pretty cool. But getting back to a little bit more useful, I find it actually nice. Let's go ahead and turn that off. I find it actually nice to use this little hand tool up here, which will allow you to click and drag any area of your photo. This way, instead of relying on different areas of my curve, I can actually use my photograph to decide where I want to be lighter or darker. For instance, if I want this tonal range of my image, now I'm not talking about this section of the road, I'm talking about this level of dark. If I want this a little bit brighter, I can click there and drag it up, and you can see basically it corresponds to that area of my curve and made that area a little bit brighter. If I want my sky to be a tiny bit darker, I can click on the sky and make that a little bit darker. And I can take maybe my midtones and I can make those a little bit brighter as well. So using this little hand tool does give me the ability to make some changes to different tonal areas of my image. So as we can see, again, curves are a little bit more full featured than levels, but pretty much they still both do just about the same thing.
So up until now, we've been using curves and levels to just affect the light and dark information in our photo. But you can also affect color. And here's where these tools get really, really powerful. So let's start off with our levels. Going to our levels adjustment, right now we're on RGB, which is a combination of our red, green, and blue channel. If I go to just my red channel, now I can actually remove some of the reds from my photo or add some reds to my photo. I can do the same thing from my shadows, remove red from my shadows, or add red to my highlights. And of course, the opposite with my output levels. I can add red to my shadows, or I can remove red from my highlights. Now, I have the same thing with my other color channels. Green, we can see the opposite here is magenta. And with blue, we can add blue into our shadows and pull blue out of our highlights, which will be adding yellow. We can do the same thing with our curves. So if I go to my red channel, oh, sorry, I meant to click on curves. If I go to my red channel, I can actually add red into my shadows, or if I pull it to the right, it's gonna remove red from my shadows, and I can even create points right over here, which give me a mix of the two, and I can pull this down as well to give me a little bit more of an interesting photograph. So we have a lot of variation, and of course, even if you move those things, you can still add a midpoint here to change how your image looks. Okay, the same thing is too true with our green channel. We can increase the amount of greens in our shadows or magentas in our shadows. We can increase the greens in our highlights or magentas. And the same thing with our blue channels. So more blue or less blue. And here we have the same thing, more blue or less blue. So different charts and different ways of basically doing very similar things. So with all that said and done, let's go ahead and give you a practical example of how we're gonna use this to add a little bit of a solar flare to this image. So what I wanna do is basically just add like a really nice red flare coming from the left, like a red orange. So we're gonna to go to our red channel and I'm gonna take my shadow levels and kind of bring these up, add a little bit of red into my shadows. Okay, there we go, and bring this area up as well. So I want this to be orange, right? But there's no, <laughs> Right, it says red, green, and blue. It doesn't say orange anywhere. But orange is basically a combination of red and yellow. And yellow is the opposite of blue. So we're gonna be using our red channel and then we'll go to our blue channel. So our blue channel, basically we wanna just take our midpoint here and drag that down a little bit and that's going to be our yellow. So we can see turning this off and on, there we have our yellow. Maybe I went a little bit too far. Something like that actually looks pretty good. And I'm gonna take this down a little bit Fantastic. That looks really nice. Now, as of now, this covers our entire image, which might be a little bit too much. So we're gonna click on our layer mask. I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert this, and then we're gonna use our gradient tool. So let's hit G for the gradient tool. We're gonna to go to our gradient editor, and I'm gonna choose the foreground to transparent option. So I want my foreground color to be white, and it's gonna to go to transparent. So we have a black layer mask completely invisible at this time. So we want it to be white transparent. So it's gonna make this layer visible to invisible. And we're gonna choose our radial gradient. So basically what we have here, when I click and drag out, it's gonna go from visible to invisible with this color that we made with this adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and try it. We're gonna click here on the top left and drag this out. There we go, basically making it more visible here on the left and kind of fading out. Now, if I hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask, this is what the layer mask looks like. So it's most visible here, slowly fading and getting less and less visible. Now, the great thing about any adjustment layer is I can adjust this at any point in time. I can just double click right here on the adjustment layer and I can decide, you know what? Maybe I want this to be slightly different. Maybe I want to go to my blue channel. There we go, bring my point up here, maybe I want a little bit more blue or maybe I want a little bit less blue, okay? All of these adjustments are available to us at any time. I'm gonna go to my green channel and add just a tiny bit of greens because I feel like it needed to balance out there. All right, I think that's looking really, really nice. So let's see if I can do something similar with levels. So let's go back to our levels adjustment layer, okay? And again, we wanna go to our red channel. I wanna just bring some red into our shadows. So we're gonna do that here. And we're gonna do the same thing with our midtones. So add some red into our midtones, and then go to our blue channel, and then pull some blues out of our midtones, basically replacing them with yellows. We'll invert our layer mask by hitting Control or Command I, 
and then click and drag from left to the right with our gradient. There we go. And we can see we've basically color toned very similarly. And in this case, I'm gonna go back to my RGB and we're just gonna make it a little bit brighter as well. So not only is it getting, oh, that looks nice. Not only is it getting a little bit warmer, but it's getting a little bit brighter. Let's go to our green channel, maybe put a little bit of green, and then I wanna put a little bit more red as well. There we go. So we have a really nice sunburst that already was present in my image. We just exaggerated it a little bit. Okay, so we have a little bit more red. I chose a little bit more red with our curves. And here we have a little bit more yellow with our levels. So once you get to know and understand both of these tools, they're incredibly powerful and you can use them not only to affect your light and dark information, but color information. Whether you wanna do that on your entire image, just within a selection, or like we've done here with the gradient to enhance a light source. So personally, I tend to switch between the two. They're both incredibly powerful, and as long as you have a good understanding of how they both work, you can choose whichever one you feel most comfortable with. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying 30 days of Photoshop. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and sign up. You can do that right here down below. It's absolutely free. You get to hang out with me and go from beginner to pro in 30 days. Thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.